everyone, it's Miss Julie here from Soul Sparklets Art, and today we are creating a fairy in the spirit of summer, the beginning of summer, where we have these beautiful gardens blooming, and this fairy has brought them to life. Now, one of the things we're going to explore today is color. So often when we draw, we choose black to draw with. And so today I'm going to encourage you to choose something else. So this fairy was drawn in blue and then she was drawn in a violet color. So I want you to choose a non-black to draw with. And we're gonna be using the same color to do the wash of the sky. So for the violet fairy, I painted in purple here. And for the blue one, I painted the background in blue. Now, of course, you can change things up if those don't appeal to you. But we're going to draw a simple fairy and we're going to use oil pastels. If you don't have oil pastels, use crayons. But what we're going to do is choose some different colors. So for every single thing that we draw today, the hair, the wings, the flowers, except for the skin tone, we're going to use multiple colors. So notice how these flowers aren't just red. They're red, white, and different shades of pink. And if we flip over here, you can see the oranges and the reds and the pinks and the yellows. Same thing with her wings and take a look at her hair and the colors in her hair. So we're gonna be playing with color today as we create our Midsummer Fairy. You ready? Let's go. Okay, first we're gonna pick out whatever color we want to be the primary color that we're going to draw with. And that color is gonna be the same or similar to what we're going to use for the watercolors in the background. So choose whatever you'd like. I think I'm going to go with a, let's go with this color today. This is my violet. I'm gonna make sure I pull a little bit off of my oil pastel here. And I'm going to start by drawing the face. So the face, take a look, it's a J shape. Then we're gonna draw the neck and then we're going to draw the hair. Now, if you have an idea for your own fairy that you'd like to draw, please feel free. We're drawing our fairy mostly on this side of the page with her dress going off. So I'm going to take her face here and I'm gonna draw a little J. She's gonna have a pointier chin, but that's okay. A little line coming down for the neck. And then the top swoop of the hair is going to come around the face, just like this. So this is her face, that's the start of her neck, that's the start of her hair. Now, from the neck, we're gonna draw the arm neck. So right underneath the neck, we're going to go ahead and draw the arm. It's going to come out. That's the bend in the elbow. We're gonna draw a parallel line coming up, and then we're gonna give her a little mitten. Then we're going to go ahead and we're going to draw the body of her, which is going to swoop down and off. So swoop down for the bottom, and then her dress can get a little bigger if you like. Now we're going to finish her hair. So this was the start of her hair. We're gonna come over the side. So over the top and swoop down. You can kind of see her slowly taking shape here. And then starting at this point right here, part of her hair, we're going to come and draw the other line that's going to go off the page. So that finishes her dress. You can see her hair is still hanging out there. So you can go ahead and kind of connect the rest of her hair to her back. And finally, her neck is kind of hovering a little bit. So we're gonna go ahead and connect it. And we can even add some more hair, just depending on how we drew her hair and her neck, we might have some more hair coming in here and this stripe we now have two stripes there and we're going to make it look like that's intentional by drawing another couple of stripes down her hair and now you never knew that those pieces were disconnected in the first place now if you'd like to draw another arm you can draw another arm in here but i'm just going to go ahead and connect the rest of her body with her arm. I like that approach, it makes things easier. If you feel like she needs another arm, please feel free. Now you notice we have this nice space in here, that's where we're going to draw her wings. We're gonna start with the wing that's on this side of her body. 
I'm gonna go up to a point and swoop back down. And her second wing is going to go to a point and swoop back down and hit that other wing right there. I'm gonna add some lines in her wings too. And then it's time to draw this magic. So this fairy is actually bringing this garden to life. So coming out of her hand here, I'm gonna draw a few lines that kind of curve and they kind of spiral upward. I'm gonna draw a couple of them, making them different lengths. And one's gonna come down here. I can even choose to add a few more in here. We're gonna come back and add some other colors to this magic after, but now we have an idea of where the space is. The garden is down here. Now you can draw whatever flowers you'd like for your garden. I'm gonna draw these flowers that look a lot like roses. They're a little abstracted, which means they're not super realistic, but we get the idea that they're roses. I'm gonna start my big one right here. So for every rose, I'm gonna do a little bit of a spiral. And then my petals aren't going to be connected. So it's not gonna connect here, but I'm gonna draw the shape of a petal. The next one's gonna kind of come around here. Next one's gonna come around here and notice how they're not actually touching. Just the idea of the petal. That's the first batch. Then I'm gonna draw another batch around that batch. I'm keeping these lines nice and loose. And now I have the idea of my rose. Now, once we start putting some color into the roses, other than the color we're drawing with, they start looking a lot more like a rose or a flower. Now, if you'd like to draw other flowers in here, feel free. I'm going to continue to draw these roses. There's my spiral, my first layer of petals, which are not touching. They can be completely uneven. Some can be bigger, some can be smaller. You're just looking for space. I have these two. I have all this space over here. So this is gonna be my next one. And I'm just drawing these wiggly lines on the outside. I have three roses here and I might choose to draw another one, but I wanna put some leaves in and I wanna put some stems in too. So here's my stem, this one's coming down, coming down, maybe this is a part of another rose bush. So then I'm gonna make sure I get some leaves and these leaves were just filling the space. So is there a leaf here? I don't think one can reach. So that would be a good place for another rose. So I can draw a little tiny one. I could have put a rose bud in there, I didn't. And maybe over here, I'm gonna draw another little one. So this whole space is filled. Now, once you're done drawing your garden and however you'd like, this one we can put away. And then we're gonna choose whatever colors we would like to fill in our garden with. What is our color scheme? So we're gonna start with a skin tone for our fairy. So you can choose whatever color that you would like. This is a little bit of an almond. We're gonna color the face and the neck and that hand. And then everything else is going to be dependent on what color your hair is. But we're gonna add a little bit of pop. So I'm using some stripes to add some color. And for everything that we're coloring in, except for that skin, we're gonna add multiple colors. That's the object today. See if we can fit in lots of color. Now, I kind of had some room there, so I think what I'm gonna do is get out 
this orange and add it where my white spaces are. So we're adding lots of different color to everything. Now, since I have this color out, I think I'm gonna add some of this to her dress as well. And for the rest of these things, the wings, the dress, and the flowers, we're gonna color in splotches. So I have this color out, so I'm going to use it to color splotches here. So I'm keeping with the same color scheme. I'm creating unity, which means that I'm using certain colors throughout the entire piece. Notice how I'm not using them in the same ways. I'm not choosing the same petals. And if I am, it's, it's on accident. I'm just spreading this color throughout my piece because I use it in her hair. I use it in her dress. Now, if you're using crayons, you can do the same exact thing, but you're just spreading that color out. And as you're spreading it out, you'll start thinking about what other colors you wanna add to your piece. Now, these are some really pretty autumn colors. So I think I'm gonna add a little bit of red here. Again, I'm just adding the splotches. I can add a little bit more if I'd like, a little less if I'd like, it's up to you. On your second color, you might wanna think about adding some to the wings or what color your wings will be. Notice how I'm not coloring in all of the wings. Once I have some on her, I'm gonna start adding it to my flowers. Now, oil pastels, you can just layer on top, so don't be afraid to color some right on top of the other colors. Get them a little close. They can mix a little in some spots. Your goal is just to apply all this color and to make this beautiful, vibrant garden that this fairy has brought to life. Now, when we were drawing the magic, and I drew mine in the violet here, I told you that we could add some more color to that magic. So the colors that you're currently using, whatever those are, so I happen to be um, have used this dark orange and this red, you can choose to add a few more magical pieces in that color that you just chose. So not any color, but in the colors that you're using that are part of your color scheme. And I'll show you. So I'm using this red here, and then I'm gonna just go ahead and add just a little bit of red up there. Okay, my, my garden's starting to look a little bit too much like autumn, so I think I'm gonna bring some of this color here. This looks like, let's see, it's a red brown. Uh-oh, well, we'll see what this is gonna look like. That's what I was hoping for. It's more of a plum here. And I'm gonna finish her dress and add some to her wings. And then I think I'm gonna make a little bit of lightness in her wings here leave a little bit of room there on the flowers. Notice how I'm only using a few colors to create this color, this color scheme for my work. I'm leaving some spaces open so I can add, I think I need like a bright pink, maybe a yellow trying to think what would make some of this pop. And I'm starting to run out of areas to color, which is perfect. Let's see, 
I don't want to get too orangey with my yellow. Let's try this yellow. I'm coloring right over parts of the wings because remember, oil pastels can blend. So I'm adding this yellow and I'm just adding some right there to the wings. I can even add some to the dress. Got lots of colors coming through here. And with these remaining spots here, I'm gonna add some yellow. Now it's okay if there's some white showing through with your flowers in your garden. You can paint over it with the background color. Or you can just leave those white. And you can see how all of that color has spread out. Yep, that yellow is exactly what I needed. Now the last thing that we have before painting is the leaves. I'm gonna do the same thing. So I'm choosing this green and I'm gonna just color in parts of my leaves with the first green that I choose. Now, if you only have one green, use a blue or a yellow as your second color. So I can show you here. So if you only had one green, you can go ahead and color in with your yellow and I'll brighten it right up. And I'm gonna keep going because that looked really pretty. I can go back and get a different color of green if I want and add some on top. And if I really feel like the need, I can go back and I can even add another leaf if I feel like there's a really empty space there and I can go ahead and add something to my piece. Okay, now that we have it in this stage, we want to get out our paint. So I chose violet for mine. Now, if you choose to use a different color for yours, is there going to be a problem? Is Are the art police gonna come for you? No, but if you use the color, try to find something similar to it. And notice how I use these warm colors. So as soon as I paint it, these colors are just gonna pop right off of the paper. So grab those watercolors and your water and a paintbrush and we're gonna paint. Okay, I have a lot of paint options. So I'm going with this one right here and I'm going to paint. Now, if I don't like that, I think this is a purple here and I can kind of play around with colors and see which one I like the best. But we use oil pastels so you can paint right over the top And I have a really long brush. Take a look at the size of this brush. Not the best brush for painting today. But I'm going to actually change up my purples as I paint here. I even have like a reddish color. So remember, there's no wrong way to paint your background. But it's fun to experiment with colors and see what you like. You can paint over these roses because these watercolors will repel them. Or you can just paint around it like I do right now. And if some of the watercolor accidentally gets on that oil pastel, know that it's going to come right off. Sometimes it'll bead on top. That means you'll see little bits of it. And then later on, it will dry. It's going around. Because they're watercolors, I don't have to worry too much about ruining what I just made because oil and the watercolors, the oil pastel and the watercolors do not mix. I'm going to bring her down here. Got a lot of open space up here. So I'm going to use these wide strokes to get that color. I'm changing up my purples. I think Sometimes I'm going to add a little bit of that red. It's kind of fun to switch it up. Add some variation to your background. And 
we are almost done. You might not be done, but mine is almost done. So when you get to this point, you can take your paintbrush and kind of try to find any spaces that you mix, you missed and get a little bit closer to those areas. Let your paint kind of go around, spread out those watercolors. I like those different shades of purple I use for my background. So you can see here is the one that I did today. Here is that one. And this one is even darker. Hope you enjoyed creating this Midsummer Fairy with me. Until next time.